Well, hello and welcome to another Planet Cruise TV special. A wonderful chance for you to find out about some of the big movers and shakers in the cruise industry. And today, sitting here on the couch with me, we have Angus Struthers, who's the marketing director for Cunard, the Red Funnel. Angus, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Great to have you here. And uh, thank you for joining us in our little studio. No and of problem. course, uh, Cunard. I mean, tell us about your relationship with Cunard and your relationship with the cruise industry. Uh, so I joined Cunard in September last year. Uh, it is my first job within the cruise industry. Um, before that, uh, I've always had jobs within travel. Uh, so the majority of my career um, was spent at Virgin Atlantic. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Doing a variety of roles from uh, heading up the advertising communications to product management to service design. So you, you've joined Cunard. I mean, you've joined this company with this tremendous heritage. What, what drew you to it, Angus? What, 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 made, you know, what kind of drew you to do that in September last year? Uh, it's, it's, it's very rare you get the opportunity to work on such an iconic brand uh, and get the opportunity to play a significant role in helping keep that, that, that brand iconic for the next 175 years because of course we're, we're about to celebrate 175th anniversary next year so th th there's, a, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with it. You know, I'm, I'm very conscious that um, here is a brand that, that is iconic, is um, set the benchmark in many ways for the cruise industry. Um, and you know, I, I want to make sure that, um, that, that we, we, we keep Cunard in that elevated position um, going forward. And it's a great opportunity. It is, and of course many people don't realise when they're watching this that it really essentially was Cunard that invented the, the, the cruise industry when the, when, they, when the ships were out of out of their transatlantic seas and they go off and do these lovely little winter warmer cruises. It was all the, a new the, thing, you know? The, it, it was, but uh, what, what people may not realise is that when Cunard was started, she was started as a Royal Mail ship. Um, exactly. Carrying passengers was almost, uh, it wasn't the core reason for yeah. the foundation of, of Cunard. That was to carry mail across the Atlantic uh, on behalf of the British government. Um, and uh, gradually the, the, uh, the, the passenger element of Cunard line became more and more important. But you're right, you know, there's um, the first uh, round world cruise was on a Cunard ship. And so you're right, it's, it's set the benchmark. Yeah. OK, um, <coughs> you're renowned at Cunard for your transatlantic crossings. Um, what is it that you feel is, because is, obviously in the modern cruise industry where a lot of, a lot of uh, cruises are port intensive, a transatlantic crossing is the antithesis of that. It's mm -hmm. the complete opposite. And, mm -hmm. Why do you think the British cruise market, our customers, would enjoy a transatlantic crossing? What is it about that? So I think anyone that, that's slightly worried about what am I going to do for seven days at sea um, really shouldn't be. Queen Mary 2 was designed to cross the Atlantic. Mm. Um, we just talked about some of the variety of things you can do. Um, I was fortunate enough to do a transatlantic crossing at the end of last year, and you were certainly not bored. Mm. And you get into, people were saying, before I went, that um, you'll get into the rhythm of a transatlantic crossing. And I was like, what are we talking about? There? And you do, you find yourself just getting into this rhythm of, you know, there's, there's the only thing to look at outside is sea. Mm. But the amount of things that you can do on board, uh, you, you, you will literally not be able to do everything on the daily program. Um, and if you enroll in things like a watercolour class, right, so you'll know that between nine and ten in the morning I'm doing watercolour classes, then I'm going to go and listen to this lecture and then I'm going to go and watch a 3D film in the cinema. Uh, oh and then let's not forget lunch in Britannia restaurant and um, now I'm going to go and sit in the library and read my book. And you just find yourself getting into the rhythm. Um, and I, there's also there's, there's a nice antithesis to, to, to the hustle and bustle and rush of, of everyday life. Absolutely. You know what one of the things that, that, that uh, that strikes me is that I, I did the transatlantic crossing going from Brooklyn to uh, from New York to to Southampton, and the flight was seven hours out and then seven days back, and no jet lag, um, and it's just it's take as much shopping with you it, as you want. It, it, there you go. Yeah, it, it, it's just a it, it's just a very civilized way to cross the Atlantic. And it is, and I, I I would completely agree with you. I mean, I had. Uh, my, my two of my brothers and, and their and their families uh, come on board, their wives, and my best friend and his and, and his partner, um, and they absolutely loved it. 
and exactly for the reasons you said there, the rhythm of a transatlantic, mm. the fact that um, they were, they were at sea and they just uh, the, these are highly stressed people. One of them's one of them is a lieutenant colonel in the army, very very you know. Uh, the other one the other one's a comedian, um, you know, who's <laughs> and who's always on tender hooks. And I've never seen them so relaxed mm. as they were on board. It just kind of like this, this sea of calm almost mm. washes over them. It's it's a very relaxing experience. Mm. It really really is.